Hi and welcome back to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. Today, I have a guest celebrity taxidermist from Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> She's out here teaching um, taxidermy classes for how many days? Three days? Three days, yeah. Three days in uh, North Hollywood or somewhere about there. Yep. Why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Mickey Ellis Quapis and I am a traveling taxidermy teacher. So I stopped by here and we're hanging out. And today, she's <laughs> teaching me how to mount this hedgehog, which by the way, I have a permit for. Um, <laughs> and what's interesting is, I always tell you on my tips that, you know, you can always learn from somebody or do some new things. And, and uh, she taught me a couple of uh, really good tips. And for, he taught uh, me some good tips too. Like if we had pipe cleaners, which I don't, I'm going to use a pipe cleaner for the leg because the wire's stiff enough for this. Mm -hmm. And the pipe cleaner part would actually fill this little leg up. So, yeah. Otherwise, they're too tiny. You can't really fit any other kind of form inside. But if you stick a pipe cleaner in there, then the fibers of the pipe cleaner fill out the leg and the wire helps hold it stiff. And, and normally, I'd wrap a body. But this one's the wrong size. Right, because <laughs> Jeff did it. <laughs> However, explain why we're going to eat what we're doing instead. We're going to use fiber fill because the inside of a hedgehog, if you look at their anatomy, they're pretty rounded on the back. So if you fill it with fiber fill, then it creates a nice rounded shape and then you just stitch up the belly and it's exactly the shape that you need. But with an animal with a more specific anatomy, then you would want to use a wrapped form or a cast form. Or like mine here, or all my big form. stuff, like I normally do. And see what's interesting, and it's always fun to work with a... Um, another taxidermist like I said in some of my videos because just the sharing of the information what you learn from each other and then you feed off each other you start to develop an actually an energy and a momentum plus it kind of like re-energizes you about your, your craft when you when you get all um you know bummed out and depressed yeah, or in I've a learned funk. so much already today and it's nice that you're learning from me really? because when? I view you as the expert. So. Oh no, no, no <laughs> way. I'm not, I'm not. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. But first thing she learned is never stop by Chuck's shop because the first thing that happens if you he even. He makes you do work for yeah, him. Yeah, if you, if you <laughs> even say you're a taxidermist, we're going to do something because that's how much fun, you know, I have with this and I love it. And again, this one I made little teeny ear liners for out of scraps. And we already have one in. Well, we're gonna have to glue them if we get done. Yeah. When we get done. And then uh, these girls are really smart. So uh, this skull got crushed on this thing. So I just sculpted my usual foam lump to smooth it out with clay. But they said, why don't we look up a hedgehog skull on the internet and get the right shape? I go, why don't we do that? You know, and so she did and that. So now we have that and we carved it down a little bit and we're gonna see how it fits. So the ear liners are in and they seem to be the right shape and size. Yeah. And again, I just winged that too, you know. It doesn't have to yeah, be Yeah, well it's trial and error. For that sure. and you know, well so many like like uh I always say on my tips, so many taxidermists rely on the book, the supply catalog, and that it has to say this or that, right, for whatever you're working on. Mm-hmm. Like but you can MacGyver everything. Well, that's it. I like that term MacGyver. Well, look at it. It's starting to look like yeah, something already. Because if you've seen them, they have like wider faces and then little narrow noses. So this yeah. is probably... Well, see, what I thought we could do is we'll just smooth it out with clay. Yeah. And then do it like that. Yeah. And so then... that's about the right size. We carved right. it down. So if you want to... Do you have clay? Yeah. Okay, right here. We'll do and I don't usually use clay, so you can show me how that's done. Well, I've been really learning a lot more since I've been, especially sculpting with Freer, the way he does it. Mm -hmm. he, he can lay clay like black. I mean, it's just like smooth. Yeah. I mean, so what I'll do is, this is no really wrong way on this, and, and you don't really want to, um, like a little goes a long way. Right. So I'm just going to actually, I'll even like kind of like, Go ahead and rough eye, you know, just even make the eyes and all because it's just not really going to matter on this. You know. But I like to sometimes, I get carried away because, I'm like I said, I'm used to working with big game. Mm -hmm. And a big game when Next you're... Next thing you know, we leave you alone with this and it'll be covered in clay. No. It's like this big. That's it. They call it, <laughs> Fraser calls it celebrating. 
when you take the clay and you just mm -hmm. and the next thing you know it is this <laughs> big you know but really the right way to lay in muscle is each muscle right like a lower eyelid and an upper eyelid see like that so right. you'd have a demarcation but like it, this project is for I'm only doing this for, for, kicks. for kicks and then I'm gonna give it to somebody I don't know give it to some kid or something <laughs> So yeah, so when I say clay, that's really, you know, we just need to smear it, smear it. Works. Okay, so, and we need to tuck the lips, right? So I'll put a little, right. so we can tuck the lips into it. And there you can make it, is that enough to make it pointy for you, or should it's, I need a little it more? It should be. It's not a lot on there. So after you know. do the clay, then you just put it in. Yeah, wait, however. Let's back oh, up. Oh, I'm gonna have to glue second. the earliner. Glue the, I'll just dip it real quick. Okay. The glue. Is this the glue that you make? Yeah, this is my glue I make. It makes his own glue. Yep, I've mm -hmm. got a video on my channel on it. It's not hard, but it does involve boiling water. So, like I told you when you came in, it scares yeah. some people. But. Why don't you put those in while I wash my hands? Okay. I'll, I'll get the water bucket over here. Well, you know something I got to say, you guys are really fun because you came in to visit and to meet and take a couple <laughs> pictures and then I said, well, let's do a project because I, I can't resist myself, you know. Hopefully I can come to your class, but I'm not, have to be on Sunday. Well, that's when all the fun people are coming. All of our friends are coming on Sunday, so. Oh, that sounds fun. God, I wish I had some freaking... <laughs> We're gonna have to wing it, like you said, MacGyver. I got all kinds of thin wire, so. Yeah, or we could even do like wire and then just wrap it really thinly in twine. All right. Okay. So we've got that. Take the head in. And. Okay. See how that's starting to shape up? We're not gonna be able to film this whole thing on this video, so we're just giving you a basic idea how she's does her little thing there. Yeah, we don't even... Do you get the headset first? I want a little couple pins. Yeah, I'm just pins. trying to make sure that the eye is actually behind the eye hole. Yeah. I haven't called it eye hole before. There's <laughs> uh, so my little pins. Here's a couple. Oh, it was covered with clay. That yeah. Fine. I can't yeah. See yeah, because I, I guess we don't need to pin them. Um, so it's starting yeah. to take shape already. So how do you? How would you I would do it like the same way that you would do the yeah. animal? Yeah. You have to tuck the lips and everything. How yeah. Do you so do on that a with small one like that, I would just grab some kind of anything. Okay. Some kind of anything too, <laughs> because see, even our little nose, right? Get the clay behind that. You have way more tools than I do here, too, because you just do so much more. Well, thank you. <laughs> like to think I'm a shop, but still. So, see, I'll just kind of shape it. Right. Into the clay. Okay. And that's. I'm used to like rabbits, so they have just such a small mouth opening that you can kind of just pin it and it's done. Right. So, even this. And see what's going to happen is with this one, we're going to mess this up when we sew it all up. And we're going to have right. to come back and, and fix, and fix it, it. Anyway. it. Yeah. But basically, well, at least we have a good start. Basically, you're just, you know, pressing it in there. And see, I, I worked a lot of that clay into that lower lip. Right. So you see how it's got some volume. Right. And then this kind of comes up over it. So, and then our eyes are still good, see? Awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's flip it over and do this because I don't have that much time on the tape. Let's give them an idea and then we'll wind it up and we'll finish okay. this. Yeah, and then we just need pipe cleaners for later, but... We don't have that, them. So. Yeah, we don't have them now. So what she's will. doing is making this body out of this. So you just kind of... And then you sew it up first and then put your 
pipe cleaner um, in or what? No, I would put the pipe, well, I would sew up the legs. First, a right little now? Bit. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I had everything here and then I moved. <laughs> I was working on this big deer from yesterday, the big giant jumbo deer project. Now I'm terrified those two guys are two, yeah, let's two see guys. The are gonna, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Show it to the camera. <laughs> it just you can't see the eyes because they're covered in clay still. Well but. no, and that, some of my tips aren't really like <laughs> like someday I'm hoping to have like the professional start to finish deal. Right. Mine are just to get an idea of what's going on and just for fun. And yeah. you I find that a lot of times on YouTube people, people only people watch want. a couple minutes anyway. Right. And it's only the hardcore guy is going to stay in till... And leave comments, of course. Well, yeah. Everyone they're... has an opinion. <laughs> well, you know what they say about that, young lady, but we won't <laughs> say that because we're not potty mouth sometimes. Right. So Do you what... use a straight needle or no? I usually do, but... You want a straight needle? No. Just... So how do you stitch? Because I go kind of like if you were lacing a shoe. I go in and out and in and out. Do you use a baseball stitch? Okay, now I use both types. I use a whip stitch on a repair okay. and a baseball stitch on a seam. Okay. A lot of times when I was sewing that, when you were coming in, I'll use a double thread on an outside seam. Okay. But this is so little, I'm only going to use a single thread. So that's... And are you doing a baseball stitch on this one? Yeah. Okay. I think, see, get it started. Yeah. Do you ever use fishing line for yours? No, I don't like fishing line. And here's why. I don't like it because it it loosens up. Number one, it doesn't bind on itself. Number two, it cuts. Oh, yeah. You know, because a lot of times, especially say you're doing birds. I don't know, you don't do birds, but, well, maybe you do, <laughs> I don't know. No, 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 I don't like doing birds because they're so little and they kind of scare me. Well, don't be scared because <laughs> if, if you could do rabbits, I think you could do anything. But, um... The thread is actually stronger than the than the the skin. What? Oh, I lost my thread. Yeah. So therefore, it's you know you don't really need. See, this is a little dry right. because it's been in the freezer, and because I didn't really plan on. You emailed me, and the next <laughs> thing you know. I'm here. You showed up, and then now I'm saying, let's do this. And <laughs> so it was thoroughly planned out, as most of my uh, <laughs> tips and projects are. You know, not. But that's what makes me, me. And that's what makes you a good taxidermist, being able to just roll with it. So you sew up the leg all the way, and then put mm -hmm. the wire in. Yeah. Okay. And since we don't have pipe cleaners, I guess what we could do is just take wire and take twine and just wrap it maybe once or twice to get, I guess, kind of the way that you would wrap a squirrel's tail if you were doing that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'm almost to the end, right? Yeah. Of this leg, right? Yeah, Oops. that's probably good. Oh, I missed. Got a piece of skin there. One, a couple more. God, I hope those two deer heads don't come in right now. You know why they're in velvet? Have to inject them oh, and everything. Yeah. And I just trying to get away from that, but our seasons are so early in California right. that everything's already in velvet. But then Utah, yeah, one more. It's still in velvet, and uh, the only right real way to do it. Is this too thick? No, that should be good. How much of a piece do you want? Oh, I don't know. Probably three inches maybe? Three inches? Yeah. About two and a half, right? That works. <laughs> Twine. Yep. And then do you have little pliers? Little pliers? Or big players or whatever. I have these pliers. Oh, that's fine. I have these little ones. Okay. So. Just 
just so that just, there's something just, for it to yeah, catch on. Yeah, you just on. put a hook on it so yeah. that you can have something for the string to grab onto. So this is like, I would call this 100% old school taxidermy. Yeah, well, I like teaching people in regards to anything. You have to learn kind of the basics before you move on to doing anything super fancy. So, I, I mean, in my classes, I use dry preservation and like all the old school techniques. And I always like to say to, to my students, um, or anybody that'll listen, <laughs> you should know how to do it all the different ways. You know, of every, even if you don't really use that, like leather ear liners, bonded ear, regular ear liners, you know, I, I love believe in ear liners, but you should know how to do it. And it's, it's often good to know where, well, my one teacher calls it whose shoulders you're standing on. You know, people don't know how it developed and, and, and from where and why they even do what they do. So it's good to see, you know. Now what she's doing looks like she's just building it I'm up just, big enough. Yeah, I'm just wrapping it. We'll try with three layers and see if that's big enough. Okay. So we don't even need to cut it oh, we don't. that way. I'll test it and see. And it looks like that's actually a little bit too thick. So I'll undo one layer. Okay, wow. Get this in there. Does that work? Yeah, that'll work, huh? Especially if you dipped it in the magic glue, it'll yeah. slide right in there. Yeah, so that'll probably work. So okay. then, um, so then we, we make four of those. Is, let's see, do you have scissors? Or that knife is fine. Or this. And then we can just fold this over so that it doesn't come undone. You just dip it in that glue, right? Right, just dip it in, and it glues right in. And that's why I like make my glue. I don't like to put sand in it to make it feel good that it's sticky. Like like a lot of the glues you buy will have grit in it, and that's to make it grab. But we, you really don't want your glue to grab. What you want your yeah, glue you to do is slide that in. Yeah. I'm covered in glue now. Now dip your hands in the water, <laughs> right over there. Well, oh, that's perfect. So then what we'll do is we're going to do this three more times, right? Yep. And then sew this up. And, and so then it has legs. Then it has legs, and then we'll <laughs> sew this up, and it'll be a hedgehog. So maybe yeah. it'll be in the background next time. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in, and thanks for stopping by my shop. Thank you and we'll for see having you. me. Oh, no, it's fun. We're, we're going to go back to work, and we'll see you next time.